Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be looking at KDE Neon, an Ubuntu-based operating system. But before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. That way you can be entered into the August 31st, 2021 giveaway of the Asus ZenBook 14. And remember, you can always unsubscribe if you don't like me. This is KDE Neon, an Ubuntu-based KDE operating system. So we're just going to start off. This is the way you load up. This is what you see right out of the box. There is no welcome screen that loads up. So let's see if there happens to be one in settings. Welcome. So there's not a welcome screen. Well, let's just take a look here. What kind of applications we get out of the box. On the graphic side of things, you get Gwynview and Ocular. And if you open up Ocular, it is a document viewer almost like a PDF viewer but for base documents your thumbnails would be over here and then you'd be able to view them here so let's go ahead and close out of that internet you've got the Firefox web browser you've got KDE Connect and KDE Connect SMS that way you can yoke it up with your Android phone and be able to get notifications directly on your KDE desktop and then you have open on a connected device via KDE Connect now there is an app that you would download to your Android called KDE Connect. That way you can sync them up together and then you can share information from your phone to your PC. Multimedia, you've got the VLC player. Office, you've got Ocular. Settings, you've got iBus preferences, input methods, and system settings. System, you've got Discover, Dolphin, Info Center. Now Discover is your software. That's where you go to download new packages and new apps. Install system, K Wallet Manager, Console, System Monitor. Let's take a look at the System Monitor real quick and see what kind of resources we are using out of the box. I only have this set up with two gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs. At present, we are using 865 megabytes of RAM. I've actually assigned it four, I apologize. 865 megabytes of the four gigabytes of RAM. And the CPU, on the two CPUs, I am using somewhere between 5 and 15%. That's pretty impressive. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Go back over to system. And you've got your console. Let's see if they've got top or HTOP installed out of the box. HTOP isn't installed. Let's try top. And according to top, we have 17... 1.7 gigabytes in a buffer, 490 megabytes of RAM being used, and 1,707 that are free. So that gives you a little bit different story than you get from System Monitor, but highly more accurate. Utilities, you've got ARC, Emoji Selector, KWrite, and Spectacle, which is your screen capture or your screenshot program. Let's go ahead and run over into the system settings and see what we have there. In system settings, you actually start with appearance. Go ahead and change this over to dark mode real quick. There we go, let's apply that. There we go, dark modes there. You can change your wallpaper from here. You can show more parent settings here. Let's click on that. And this brings you over to your global theme. Right now we're going to be running breeze dark. You do have the option of breeze or breeze twilight, which gives you dark bar, dark menu, but then white windows, light windows, I'm sorry. Application styles, you can change your windows to anything you would like to in here. If you want a narrow bar, you can set that. You want a thicker bar, you can set that. You can change the way your check boxes and your buttons look, work. So this just gives you all kinds of options there. And if you don't like any of the preloaded ones, you can always go down here and download new ones. Plasma style, we are currently running on Breeze. You have options here to change that. You can also go down here where it says get new plasma styles and download something else that's more to your liking. You've got the colors. You can set up your windows, how they show up. You can change these anytime to your preference. You can also go down here, get new color schemes and download new ones if you would like. Window decorations. Presently, I'm using the breeze. You can go to plastic, which gives you a more of a the old fashioned X and minimize and maximize buttons. But if those aren't working for you, I've seen people that download ones that look like Mac OS, ones that look closer to Windows. There's just so many different options and you can download those right here. Fonts, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust all the fonts system-wide, make them just a tiny bit bigger. Let's go ahead and apply that. 
There we go. And apply. Okay, I was getting worried there. My background disappeared. And then icons. Right now we're using the Breeze Dark. But like I said, if you want a different set of icons, you can always go down here and get new icons. Not a problem at all. Cursors, font management, and your splash screen. You can change that. Well, this has only got one in it. So if you want a different splash screen, you can go down here and obviously download it and be set to go. So you've got workspace behavior, window management, shortcuts, startup, shutdown, search, notifications. Now notifications, there's some things you want to look at in here. You can set your notifications up for specific applications. Let's say, let's go to configure. Now over here on the left is your application and your system services. If you go, let's select Plasma Workplace. Let's go ahead and configure event. It gives you a list. Like title here is catastrophe. A very serious error occurred, at least causing the program to exit. If you click on that, if you come down here, it'll let you know what notification sound has been assigned to it. So that's the notification sound. If you want to change that, you would go over here to the file folder, click on it, and you have this whole different list of notification sounds you can use. Okay? You can do that for all of these warnings. Critical message, question, fatal error, trash emptied, warning. Now, if you want to change something else, you can go to accessibility, configure the events in accessibility, and it gives you all the events that could happen, and then you could assign sounds to those. So it's very customizable in that way. Users, this is where you would enter the user information. Right now I'm in a live session inside a virtual box. You can set up your regional settings, which is your language format, spell check, date and time, accessibility, applications, KDE wallet, online accounts, user feedback, connections, settings, firewall, input devices, display and monitor. Your input devices, of course, would be your keyboard, mouse, game controller, or touchpad. You can take care of all that right in here. So that's your settings on KDE Neon. Let's close out of that. Now let's go look at the Discover Center, which is where you would get your software and apps. Okay, it's fully loaded up. With this being based on Ubuntu, I would say you have Ubuntu repositories. You do have flat packs enabled. Firmware updates are coming from Linux Vendor Firmware Service. Your KDE Neon User Edition has the Focal, Focal Main Sources, Pre-Installed Pool, Main Restricted Universe Multiverse, Focal Security, Main Restricted Universe Multiverse, and then Focal Updates. So it's pulling from the main. And you've got Snap installed. So you've got Flatpaks, Snap, Ubuntu repositories, and then your main Linux service updates for your system. You can go up top, Applications. You can look through Applications. You can go by Category, or you can just type in. I'm going to type in OBS. And there's OBS Studio. You install it from a Flatpak. Let's look for Caden Live. There's Caden Live. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and fix something I just stated because it looks as though there is no Ubuntu repositories in KDE Neon. They're basing everything off flat packs, snap packs, and then your security updates are coming straight from Linux main source. So there is no Ubuntu repositories in here, which I kind of disagree with, but if that's the way that KDE Neon wants to go, that's their prerogative. So, but still, flat packs are good, snaps are good, they just run a little bigger and download, and uh, you can still get the apps that you want to use. So let's close out of that. Let's look and see what kind of wallpapers we can change to here. Okay, so you got your base KDE wallpapers, uh, which is a pretty good looking group of wallpapers, may, I might add. Uh, let's scroll down through here. What is that, a dragon swimming in the water? Or is that, that's interesting. We'll just leave that up. So it's got all the base functionality of a KDE desktop environment. Let's close out of that. Let's close out of that. I'm pretty pressed. It seems to be running solid. It doesn't seem to be using a lot of memory at rest. Uh, just sitting in this screen. It is pretty snappy. I've run a lot of operating systems in VirtualBox that seem to lag and seem to slow way down. And this seemed to be pretty snappy with just four gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs behind it. Um, you know, if you want to try out KDE and you want to go the safe route and not jump into an Arch 
distro like Manjaro. I think KDE Neon is something that you definitely want to give a shot, especially if you're a Linux Mint user or you're an Ubuntu user. You want to try a different desktop environment. This is definitely one I'd give a shot. I appreciate y'all watching the video today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be entered into the ASUS ZenBook 14 giveaway on August 31st, 2021. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next video.